You asked for it. You got it. Dude Lander Part 2. We're back. Uh, I think Neil is... Oh, my God. Important update. Neil has placed the Have You Seen This Boy drawing on Sophie as a blanket. <laughs> she seems to really like it. She's sleeping peacefully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very tranquil. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, Julie, I sent you a picture, so if you want to show I folks. So... Um, uh, we have a question from somebody watching the live stream. Jen Lander Drunklin asks mm. if the two gentlemen watched this whole season at once to prepare for Dude Lander, or if it was a more gradual affair. Gentlemen, would you like to answer? Gradual. Kevin, would you like to elaborate? Sure. So, <laughs> outside of the uh, premiere that we watched with you and all mm. of your fans, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <to laughs> um, so, after the premiere, we watched every... <laughs> not funny. Why am I laughing? <laughs> because it's Cause kind it's of funny. funny. Uh, we watched every every two weeks, every two to three weeks, we would get yeah. together and watch uh, two to three episodes. We, we call it Dude Lander Digest. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how it was in my calendar, mm-hmm. because you would send and me And because it's what I have problems with. I- <laughs> we did have a rule, though, that Di- we couldn't Di- watch. Digesting? Is that a digestion joke? Yeah, mm-hmm. he got it. Yeah. As long as he gets it. Oh, I got it. Got it in the worst way. <laughs> Wait, did he ever take a wham with the door open? He tried to, and that's the one time he acquiesced and closed it. Uh, he started out that way, and then he wouldn't close it all the way, and then he would try to open it a little bit. Uh, I uh, I have a squatty potty, for those are, that are familiar, uh, and Neil was very confused by this, but also, I think, enjoyed using it. It was really fun when I only had to pee, to be peeing from such a great height. Why were you standing? That's why there are so many splash marks. Oh, <laughs> you fucking asshole. Neil, I was actually thinking about getting a squatty potty, and now we will not uh, get to you. one. Nope. I recommend it, though. Um, Me too. Really shoots it out of you. Mm. Um, so we're back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions? Was that, was it? That's the only question for the moment. We'll check back. If... Uh, if yeah, Neil. Um, yeah, hold, excuse me, just a minute. Y'all, if you have more questions, you just type them. Just, just type them. Anyway, Patty. Uh, so, Neil, you were talking about when your dog died when you were at Disneyland. Oh, yeah. So, we had a cocker spaniel named Sherman. I named that dog after the helper. Uh, so, um, Rocky and Bullwinkle show. And then there was a dog who had a time travel machine that had a bit on that. Um, and it was Mr. Peabody? Mr. Peabody and his helper. His name was Sherman. So we got a Cocker Spaniel when I was a kid, and I named the dog Sherman after him. He's Mr. Peabody's helper. And, oh, uh, wasn't Mr. Peabody the dog? In- yep. Okay. Yep. Nope, I flipped that script. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we had a wood pile in the backyard, um, and we had the wood piled up across two railroad ties. And the dogs dug out a spot underneath there where they would go uh, chill oh when it was God. when it was hot outside. And oh we went God. to we went to Disney World, and got my parents got a call like near our last day there that the wood pile had collapsed, Ugh. and uh, Sherman had been in uh, between the railroad ties and been crushed by the wood pile when it fell and killed him. I'm sorry. This is not a good story. I think that was my first pet death. Well, I did say my dog died while I was at Disney World. Yeah, but you said like, like, my dog died when I was at Disney World. Well, I've had some time to get jocular about it. (laughs) (laughs) That was the jocular version? Uh, Oh, God. Pro tip. (laughs) Listeners, I want you to know that whenever Allison and her friend... I won't say his name, even though we've said it 40,000 times. Yeah, he doesn't listen. He doesn't know. Cat sit, our cat Sophie, which you all know very intimately, we give them explicit extru- instructions. Don't let us know she's dead until we get back. L- if she's dead, she's dead. We can't do anything about it. Don't tell us until we get back from our trip. Because <laughs> then we don't have to deal with three days at Disneyland knowing that Sherman got crushed by logs. <laughs> Yep. I mean, that really takes a little something out of the teacups. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think it takes exactly the same out of the teacups. It's just then that you'll be puking up all the booze you drank to stop being so sad. Mm. Instead right. of the funnel cake you ate for fun. Right. Because um, it's fun old cake. But hey, y'all. R.A.P. Sherman. 
R.I.P. Sherman. Sherman was a good dog. Uh, can I tell you about my That's second pet death? So <laughs> my first pet death was a cat got ran over in the road. It's a very simple story. My second pet death, uh, my my aunt Sue also dead. R.I.P. Aunt Sue. Yeah, R.I.P. Aunt Sue. She was the best. Um, got <laughs> got me a dog without permission. Ooh. Like a like an all time aunt middle finger right mm-hmm. you know what i mean like like i tried to convince tom to get sorry my fella to get uh all of his neat well his niece and his two nephews um loud musical instruments for christmas one year he didn't because he's nice um and i didn't really try to convince him i don't think Teresa listens to this but Teresa, it was just a joke anyway um so she got me this dog uh rocky short for roxanne puppy um who was a puppy and really cute and nice and uh, then she nipped a neighbor girl who was a butthole so this neighbor girl was a real butthole and she was fine didn't break the skin puppy was totally plain uh but she made a big to do out of it and the parents threatened to call the police on this teeny tiny puppy oh no oh no i don't mean to interrupt the story i just got sad that people couldn't see my face anymore did I turn it down too low? You know what? I think maybe did the battery die? No, because my mouse is still there. Uh oh. What? Y'all, we're having technical you know uh, difficulties with the live stream. Should we pause real quick yeah. to deal the, uh, with this? I don't like pausing. Just on don't this pause. You machine. could just cut it. So about my dead dog. Mm. Um, so this bitch who lived next door, whose name I don't even remember. That's how dead to me she is. She complained. Let's make up a name for her. Vanji. Oh, Vanji. No, that's not fair. I like Vanji. I know. I was trying to think of a fair um, one. Well, my, my childhood nemesis was named Haven. Nope, won't say the last name. That's incredibly irresponsible. Haven. And she... Um, Somebody named their child Haven. Yes. What's name? Let's call her Brexit. Oh, shit. Okay, Brexit. Um, but also fuck Haven. Um, <laughs> Is that so, in Connecticut or... Yes. That's, that's where I like to summer. <laughs> it's the best gay bar in Connecticut. Um, <laughs> fuck Haven. I'd go. I bet the karaoke night is off the charts. It's not good for watching foliage. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so her parents threatened to call the cops and whatever. And I was very upset. And then my dad, who was a piece of garbage, um, said, <laughs> said to a child... Um, that he found a very nice family to adopt my puppy in the Upper Peninsula, and they had a really nice farm, and that was where the dog was going to go, and he had already taken her there to the farm. And I was in my 20s when I put together Mm -mm. that he had literally said, like, the most cliched lie about a dog's fate. And then I asked my mother, did did Rocky really go and live on a farm? And she went, no, that dog's dead. Who told you that? Ooh. My whole life, my whole fucking, oh, all, all the way through my 20s. That, the, it was, she was a very good puppy. Um, but all through my 20s, I believed, I genuinely, d- despite like, oh, did he go and live on a farm? All that shit. I genuinely believed that Rocky had been adopted by a family with a farm. It's terrible. I really thought that story was going to kill. No, I mean, I hear you. But, oh, it but, certainly killed something. Oh, I mean, oh, 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 it killed. Oh. <laughs> she was a good dog. That was terrible. I wish I had a dog. Hold on. No. So about Rollo. Oh, yeah. Rollo, oh, such good a good dog. dog. Good dog. Mm. Pretty dog, too, right? Oh, 10 out of 10 would cuddle. Oh, boy. Mm, 12 out of 10. No, I'm not saying how good of a dog. Just 10 out of 10, I would cuddle 10 out of 10 times. 12 out of 10. But 12 out of 10, good dog. Also kind of lethal. That's how always mm. helpful. Yeah. Oh, Unless yeah, you your somebody neighbor off the is boat. Brexit. <laughs> yeah, man. Got that Jack London vibe rolling hard. Yeah, totally. Mm. You know, we have not spoken about <laughs> yes. a single time. Yes, Rollo does have that Jack London vibe and he's rolling hard. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. Jack London, also a great name for a gay bar in Connecticut. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What is God. the name of the dog in Call of the Wild? It's um, it's got a name. Oh, in Call of the Wild, was well, a white fang, mm-hmm. but the dog in Call of the hold Wild. Hold on, is... hold on. It's it's like a bee. Siri. What's the name of the dog in Call of the Wild? Here's what I found on the web for what's the name of the dog in Call of the Wild. That's not helpful. 
<laughs> Hold on, let me open Wikipedia. None of this is important. Who says? We could talk more about the Jack London bar. And <laughs> <laughs> I 100% would go. 10 out of 10 would cuddle. Um, Buck? Yes. Buck. Mm. Yep. That sounds right. Nailed it, kind of. Sold into service as a sled dog in yep. Alaska. Mm-hmm. What a good book. What's the name of the dog and where the red fern grows? Oh, I've never read that book. What? Siri, what's the name of the dog and where the red fern grows? That book will make you sob. Oh, it's it's still transcribing. It's a good book. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I never was into ferns, though. What? Okay. It's my least favorite plant. The red fern, what's the name of the dog and where the red fern grows? The book will make you sob. Oh, it's, it's still transcribing. That's a good book. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Siri, you're listening a little too close, asshole. Okay, <laughs> the dog in Where the Red Fern Grows. Oh, is it a pack? It takes a stray collie. Gets it red bone. Is it Did you just say red bone? <laughs> yeah. Zem, Tim, Dan. Oh, yeah, the puppies are named Old Dan and Little Ann. Yikes, that book is woof. sad. That is some sad. Oh, <laughs> I see what woof. you did. Speaking okay, so about the cabin. Yeah, yes, so it seems really nice, right? Like two stories, but do we actually? There are two question. stories, but doesn't it look mm-hmm. like it's a two-story cabin? But we the, never see them go upstairs. The exterior, I would assume that the upper part is like a more of a lofted storage space. Yeah, assume. and yet they've never gone up there once. And so, did just Jamie and Claire build that? Did Jamie build that on his own? Did he hew it from the natives' <laughs> native wood? And sand like, it. There is a oh god! I didn't even hear that. He one. said he I sand love you so hewed much it. Right now. We spend way too much time together. Uh, there's a lot of footage. Neil's almost done with his OE, by the way. Oh, don't. This is a dangerous game. Yeah, Kevin's gotta catch up. <laughs> don't play up. dangerous game. Wait, wait, wait! Oh god, this just makes oh, me no, want to roll. No. Oh, oh, are we doing this? Don't do it! Don't! Oh, you buttholes! Uh, there's a lot of footage of Jamie with large logs, hey. even more than usual. <laughs> but Julie just said that there weren't enough. There weren't, though. <laughs> there weren't. Well, I mean, it's not very dramatic. And in the TV show of your life, how much time would be in that weird storage area you have in the other part of your condo? Building? But it's a very, I'm just saying it's a lofty storage area. It is an unreasonably nice cabin. In unreasonably nice. And is there much any, smaller. and does anything about that cabin scream Scottish architecture or anything he learned to do in the old country? Well, I mean, wood has got to be easier than rocks and shit, uh-huh. right? It's got to be easier to just put wood together than to make fucking mortar and shit. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to get in between any of the masons and woodworkers that listen to this podcast that want to like <laughs> fight that out. <laughs> uh, I will say it is, I was shocked when I found out that they were working on that like they were currently constructing the big house which is the name for that yeah you talked about the big house because i'm like okay so that's that does have multiple floors so this is the like shit compartment that they're living in in (laughs) the interim they well they sort of mash some things together because in the mix um when brie and jamie meet he's getting windows for the big house yeah and that's already under construction, not done, but um, but the they build the cabin and they build it like small and shitty so that they can survive the winter. So shitty, such a shitty. Well, little no, cabin I'm saying in the bed. Oh, in the bed. First, they have a lean to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know where that came from. Well, you were mimicking me. It was really funny. It was yeah, no, it wasn't great. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's my bit. Yeah, totally. But you can't I sh- I have should it. Step the fuck off. You really fucking should. I mean, I feel like camp. that's true of a lot of your life. True. true. Um. But whatever. Uh, anyway, so they have. A, I didn't defend you for a second there, and I enjoyed watching you. Hang it's it. fine because I just thought about how much I know about your preferences, <laughs> reef fingers and assholes. Uh, <laughs> so well, he does I really like feel it. like I've got the upper <laughs> hand here. Ooh, woof. Um, oh, Sophie. <laughs> anyway, um, so first they have a lean to, and then they have the cabin, but the cabin is like fucking leather over holes in the wall right. and a, like a packed dirt floor and they but make basically a, where I watched this whole season of Outlander yeah well Ooh. I mean <laughs> you think I'd let you into my real house <laughs> you monster <laughs> um, uh, anyway your place is very nice Kevin. the cabin oh, fuck you. Oh, I enjoyed my time there very much <laughs> the cabin 
um, is not quite so nice. And honestly, while the outside is distractingly large, uh-huh. I think the bigger problem is actually that it's so pretty and they the have so interior, much The interior, like, did they well, go to Pier 1? Well, like, no, what's I, I'm kind of okay with the idea as far as, like, furniture and stuff, that, okay, they're making trips to Wilmington and they're buying shit that came in on the boat and yeah, they're but to get, it back. Yeah, but to get that cabin built, they wouldn't be making fucking trips to Wilmington and stuff. They'd have some of those things, but everything was a zillion times more expensive because... It was all made by hand and shit. Yeah. So like their bed was like a big piece of linen over bundles of twigs. And it, yeah. it's a big deal when Jocasta sends them a feather bed as a gift. Um, they have like their metal or their iron pot over the hearth. And that's about it. You In know? fact, the cabin where the German people that like went crazy after she had a baby, mm-hmm. like that, whatever, I don't remember the specifics of that story, but they're I they're not important. Their cabin. <laughs> they're very important. Not important, but a pin in that. Cause we're coming back to it. Cause but, it's something we haven't talked about at all. But what, not but, them, something else. But the, it, oh. their cabin, both the interior and exterior was m- way more like, Realistic to me yeah. than the place that Clay, uh, Clay, me and Jer, that Jamie and Claire live. <laughs> Clay- Shouldn't have chugged that 42, are you Clay- dummy? But this new beer that I'm drinking tastes so much What's better. What's their <laughs> gross couple name? I think Clay, me. Clay, me might be it. Clay, Clay- me. It sounds so gross. It's like a wet hand. Clay, me. <laughs> Jamais. Uh, 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 that guy wears a trilby. <laughs> wait okay so where I, no wait, no, no i don't know we're still stuck on this no, right. fucking we will always be stuck on this i think claim me is it like claim is in there like yeah. ugh, it's it's upsetting but you know what they didn't think about that when they got together when she traveled through time better than clammy the phrase hers <laughs> No. Why did you make that fisting motion right there? Because Sex. it's a phrase hers. Right. No, phrase I hers. The motion. It's like it's like he's put it, taking a sentence and putting it in her vagina. Mm-hmm. Oh. Hmm. But that's still only his it's name, like though, so it's not it. a portmanteau. It's not the yeah. couples. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to have to put our minds on this. But right now, I want the dude lander's mind on one more thing before we start trying to wrap this piece of shit up. <laughs> Oh, I've got. We, I have a couple of questions. Are we okay. into, are we into okay. two-parter territory yet? Oh yeah, we already started the second part. But I mean, oh, like no, but two we didn't do podcasts. any of the things. I didn't know that we were doing. The, the uh, well, I I pa- I stopped after the first one that we stopped, and then yeah. But so mm-hmm. it's going to be two separate episodes. Doesn't have to be. Okay, that's mm-hmm. is that's this all the intro bit to a second no. episode? Are sure. we are we sure. about to start part two like right now? No. <laughs> Here's my question. It'll just be a long episode. <laughs> it will be a long episode, and that's fine. Our listeners love that shit. I don't know why. Either that I love or you all so much. We can record a little, like a little beep, and we're going to stop there and then just come back in on the dead dog and actually have it be a two parter. Good Lord. You do not want to start on the dead dog <laughs> section. Who doesn't? <laughs> okay. So, actually, let's return to Outlander. Here we go. Mm. This will be my final question before Allison takes it over and grills you guys. Mm, okay. Um, the treatment of Native Americans. Oh, it's interesting. You we haven't about that. talked about it at all, and it has been a serious theme in this season of Outlander. Um, you, I know you guys have listened to our show, so you know what our thoughts are. Um, mostly, it's weirdly like it's there and then it's absent, but the costumes are really good. Like, I don't. Do you feel? What do you feel about it? I mean, I've. Okay, my my honest thing is like I've, and this may just be indicative of, of our society, but I've been more concerned with the like, the treatment of slavery, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the like. You know, Claire and Jamie Jamie getting to holiday as abolitionists just also briefly, but then they run away, and then it's not even a con- concern for them. But oh, our daughter's in trouble, so I'm gonna send her back to the like fucking. Um, slave owning compound to keep her safe with like no you know we have to get out of here but oh now we need something so let's go back to answer cost of the fucking slave owner Ooh. right Th- this idea this like hey it, it's convenient for us to be anti-slavery at this time but now it's inconvenient for us to be anti-slavery so let's send our you know mm-hmm. and put all our shit back in that basket as and and that's not even an issue at all dear at 
in the latter part of the episode, uh, season when that shit's coming. Murtaugh doesn't have any fucking issue with it that I can see. Disturbance but, has no issue with it. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least in the show, they don't really give that space for her to have. So, that. so I felt like they touched on slavery just enough to establish that, like Claire and the that Claire in particular and Jamie to some extent are like quote unquote cool about uh, you know in their attitudes about it, but not enough to like, um, not enough to carry through to make it actually part of the show. Uh, and it's and I know that I'm sort of talking out of both sides of my mouth after complaining about them being bad time travelers earlier. They're like, and so this is like the one case of them being appropriate time travelers, knowing that they're not going to do anything about it here. So this is the one time that they decide to be like, oh, well, we can't do anything about this now. This will fix itself in 150 fucking years. Kind of. <laughs> well, maybe um, maybe that's the difference is that the Revolutionary War is so much quicker than the end of slavery. I, I'm just saying I, I was not at all comfortable with them, like uh, with the Claire and Jamie g- appeared to get to dabble with having some abolitionist fucking um, uh, bona fides and then getting on with their lives, including returning to R- River Run when it suited them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I that was a larger concern for me than the treatment of Native Americans in this season. But again, that again may be indicative of our culture where the treatment of Native Americans takes a backseat to a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, in my younger... Uh, more theatrical days. Are we going to talk oh to Kamsa? Oh my God. You Are we going to talk to Kamsa? Yeah. Oh I was a part of a outdoor drama that has gone on for 40 something years now in mm-hmm. South Central Ohio about uh, Tecumseh, the Native American who uh, united all of the tribes in one region to try to fight against uh, the white man coming in. Uh, in that show, They had several, if you were an African-American, you were a Native American. And uh, they also had uh, just white people in full paint. Oh, I had to do that in high school, too. Full body paint. It was gross. um, To to do this show. Uh, And so comparatively, in my history, towards Native Americans being presented in 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 an entertainment sense this show does a nice job of actually hiring uh people that uh uh uh, i don't know all of the actors i can't speak with totality but whenever we would pause it because we would pause the show all the time and we're watching on amazon so we can see with the actors Mm -hmm. with the amazon x-ray feature Mm, brought to you by amazon oh gross amazon is not a sponsor of this podcast not yet yeah but i'm a stockholder so (laughs) (laughs) We're going to hell. Whatever. Yeah, what can you but do? It, what can you? What can you do about all the people who have to do nothing but lift giant boxes of cat litter all day? I don't know, man. That so I'm gonna. Out. We're not getting cat litter through Amazon Prime anymore because people were like, "Please stop buying this. It's killing us." <laughs> that that hits real close to home for Neil and I. <laughs> <laughs> Got a pet fresh box this week, did we, Sophie? Did we? Did what? We? Sorry, I'm interrupting. So Kevin. I'm gonna fucking finish <laughs> my point. Uh, I, I think they do a nice job of, of representing the fact that it is a group of people who, without a lot of reasons why, are having all of their land taken from them and how they would actually react in that situation when Jamie comes down and starts tying off trees and saying this is the boundaries of Fraser's Ridge, which is a meaningless term, mm-hmm. um, how they would respond to that situation. And I also think that it's... Yeah, I, I think they're doing a, a an okay job of that. I think they're uh, there's probably room for improvement, but they're it's by far not the worst representation I have seen or been a part of of mm-hmm. Native American culture. All right, so two related questions. One I will ask, and then the other one I will toss to Allison because even if she doesn't know she wants to ask it now, she will. <laughs> want to ask it about a certain yogi dick keep that in mind all right so wait a minute i forgot what i was gonna do (laughs) (laughs) solid build up i know no i forgot allison yogi dick what what am i supposed to ask about yogi dick what did you guys think of Yogi Dick? Well, so when Kevin and I decided to wear uh, tuxedo shirts today, mm-hmm. we realized belatedly 
that the thing we really should have done was because we live in the city of Chicago, meaning we have access to bears here. Oh, the guy in the bear suit. <laughs> we should have gotten foam bear hats <laughs> to wear like with how, our tuxedo like shirts so that we could both be guys in bears suits. <laughs> Which would have been incredible. I forgot. I was trying to figure out. What I was. didn't even put that together today. <laughs> I was trying to figure out when whaling happened. I forgot we no, called Yogi him Yogi Dick. Dick. Yogi Dick. Oh, we're good sometimes, Julie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have our moments. Uh, yeah, so you, what did we think about Yogi Dick? Yeah, what did you think about the dude in the bear what costume? What happened in that moment when you were watching it? God, God. Uh, I, mean, I don't think we were... Watching? We weren't nonplussed or anything <laughs> by the thing. There's, were we plussed? Did you feel plussed? There are so many things that happen that you just kind of, in the show, you just kind of shrug your shoulders. You go, yeah. hey, I guess that's what they're choosing to show us this way. It didn't seem at all out of character for this show no. to have that happen. To okay. be like, hey, here's a guy <laughs> pretending to be a bear, just attacking people. And mm-hmm. I was like, I guess, uh, I don't know, maybe it's in the book. I, guess, I don't fucking know. It's, well, but then you listen to the podcast. Yeah, and then I was like, well, the moment's passed. Time to move on to the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I, mean, I, I have no thoughts. I mean, there are equally dumb things that have happened in the previous three seasons yeah, to totally. a man in a bear suit. And I'm going to go out on a very sturdy limb and say there's going to be very dumb things that happen in the next few <laughs> oh, seasons. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are dumb things. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like I gave short shrift to this question about it how Native Americans are dealt with in the show. Well, I think the show kind of. I mean, yeah. It's I, a- I appreciate all of uh, the costume work on that. Like, that yeah. has all been fucking cool as shit. But I also don't want to... Uh, I don't want to dwell on, like, you know, the adornment to the mm-hmm. um, disservice of the actual people that have continued to suffer <laughs> as a result of it all um it's i mean some of that shit's hard to watch right like the whole deal with otter tooth again otter tooth is that a bad, was what i was gonna say otter tooth is a bad time traveler but i don't blame him for being a bad time traveler because he doesn't have the same experience that that Claire was my has. question is uh, what did you think about otter tooth trying to come back and change native I, american I, but, history but i don't think he understands he doesn't have claire's experience right so claire has the experience to sort of show her that like okay this is just not the fucking way time travel works like time travel. Why does she continue to be so shitty at it then? I have no fucking idea. Well, we're talking about two different things. We're talking about like being bad at day to day time travel, and then we're talking about being bad at traveling in time with the intent to change history. Right. And Claire is bad at both of those things, but it's possible that one of them is just really hard to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes sense <clears throat> in the Doctor Who universe. I knew it. Fixed oh. points in time. I knew this was coming. Major. I don't historical even watch events. that show. I knew this was just coming. Major historical events are fixed points in time, which means that things have to happen that way, and there isn't really a way to change them because they're world shaping. Mm-hmm. So they just like not only shouldn't be fucked with, but really can't be fucked with. What's going to happen is going to happen, whether you interfere or not. So in theory, um, the BPDs actions are a fixed point in time um in this world i would say the american revolution is probably a fixed point in time Mm -hmm. um the civil war would definitely be a fixed point in time so like and the trail of tears sadly probably a fixed point in time so um if we look confused neil no no sorry that was wasn't the trail of tears from florida yeah but so that when claire is talking about um, all of the terrible things that happen to the indigenous people of the Americas. Mm-hmm. Um, that's sort of all in there, right? And when Ottertooth comes back, it's his intent to stop the annihilation of the indigenous peoples of the Americas. So, um, yeah. So he obviously wouldn't have that experience because this would presumably be his first time traveling. Uh, there's a conversation that Galus has with Claire where she finds out that she has traveled. She's gone through the stones three times total mm-hmm. where she's like, what the fuck? Cause most people don't make it through once. And Claire got lucky and also then learned some things and, uh, also is maybe just a good time traveler They're in exactly that really sense and it. no others. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it seems likely that you can't change big history. You can obviously change a little history because Claire traveled in time and then married a dude and then had a kid. Right. You, you can, know what I mean? You like, can make change, uh, changes in the cracks, right? Or you can yeah. do things in the cracks sort of free from consequences. Yeah. Um, 
know what I'm saying? You can like change a life, but you can't change thousands of lives probably yeah. in one go. Yeah. Like you can probably individually change what's going on with lots of people. And that would undoubtedly affect the present, but you probably can't stop, you know, like the bomb. You probably can't stop Christopher Columbus. That's what? shit. But can I just say to that point, they've none of them have actually tried to really push it the way. And Doctor Who does this sometimes, I think. Maybe you can correct me. But it's not like anybody's ever come back in time with schematics for a fucking like uh, automatic rifles or anything. Well, like to really like really try to make a difference. I mean, in theory, every time the doctor goes to the present in the UK, he is coming with world changing technology. No, but I mean like Ottertooth did not travel back in time with like just next level technology that could be executed to help them. Like, right. That the is pretty much limited to tampons and bum rolls mm. and shots of penicillin. And Although zipper. Claire and did. And zippers. And zippers. And Claire did successfully bring penicillin and syringes, which is a pretty world changing technological mm-hmm. advancement. Yeah. Um, but in terms of. And Ziploc. And Ziploc. <laughs> no saran wrap. Oh, sorry. Clean wrap. Yeah. Um, I will say one of the the better known episodes of new who is called fires of Pompeii. And it's about, um, you talked out about that on the show before yeah, right? about the doctor's companion, trying to convince him to save people right before volcano day. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he meddles enough at her behest to realize that now he has to actually cause it to happen. So, um, Ooh. yeah, so don't fuck with time basically. Yeah. Um, however, you can probably successfully stop your house from being burned down. Mm-hmm. That seems likely. And perhaps drag some already, uh, deceased corpses into the pile to make people mm-hmm. think that, uh, you died in that fire. That is the pervading the- theory between Neil and myself is that they don't actually die, but they, they don't throw, die. In they the- throw bodies in there. <laughs> yeah. They don't die in the fire. Duh. Yeah, we have theories. I've I've we read a lot of time travel thinking. fiction. I see how this shit goes. I can I ask a question about Otter Tooth? Yeah. What the fuck is he doing as a ghost? What the fuck is that about? Second ghost we've seen on the show, right? Y- you've never seen ghosts? I, I've never seen <laughs> I've never seen ghosts that have led me back to my uh to my loved ones in I don't the middle know, of dude. a storm. I mean I've Gee, been I'm dead since nineteen ninety seven and you're on this <gasps> podcast right now. Yeah. What? But I thought it was impolite to mention that. <laughs> I really appreciate that. I'm very yeah. sensitive about my transparency. I mm-hmm. honestly just never notice because you're a woman. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> guys, and those I'm boobs look rock solid um, to me. <laughs> um, no, but I don't. I just don't understand. I, that happened, and I. I mean, I got like, angry. in the world of this book, that's that is a part of at least of what we know about Claire, right? Like Claire and Frank, because Frank is also somebody that sees the ghost in the pilot, um, see things. So we've talked about in this, this universe. You I mean, whatever you watch shit with superheroes in it. Look, well, he doesn't really, he does not. I don't he understand. watches sporting events is what he watches. God, do you guys see any of like, ghosts in sports? And Dwayne, the rock Johnson films. Rampage is so flipping good. But we've but, talked about this. But on wait, what Duke would it Lander be before. like to see a basketball game? Um, wait, that person's not dead yet, though. Were God you going to say Wilt Chamberlain? Were you talking about with Wilt aliens? Dead. But oh, Space Jam. What would it be like if Wilt Chamberlain just showed up in a basketball game and you just saw the ghost of Wilt Chamberlain just defend the basket and dunk like 40 times in one well, game? Well, in the modern era, I don't really know if Wilt Chamberlain has a place in this You're game. You're right. The centers are Incorrect. undervalued. Incorrect. Oh, no, no, you no. You don't think so? Uh, nope, we're not going to talk about basketball. Okay, sorry. Can we? Nope, we're not going <laughs> to. Welcome to talking it's, basketball. Uh, <laughs> too late. Yeah, yeah um, I just, I no. don't. I'm sorry. I just have a hard time. If it's, it's okay that there is a, a ghost that guides Claire in the middle of a rainstorm, but then it's not okay that there is an actual man wearing a skinned bear attacking people. Well, I don't see. To me, but she, I can I can articulate this really easily. Please and thank you. I can take a ghost seriously because it's a serious moment for her, right? It's like, and it would be a serious moment for you. The show asks me to take a ghost seriously. Not to assume they're real, because it's fucking fiction, you doofus, but to take it seriously as an experience for this character. Sure, there's also means to justify that she could be hallucinating. She fell off a horse. It's the middle of the night. She's probably fucking dehydrated and starving and faint and has a fever because she's been in the fucking cold and wet all day. Lots of that. But on top of that, you just like, it's willing suspension of disbelief. Maybe you've heard of it. I'm fine with that. The issue with the dude in the bear costume is that the show wants me to take the dude in the bear costume seriously. It's like... Wait. 
Wait. The ghost brought her shoes back to Jamie's camp, though, right? Yes. So that's not a fever dream. That's... Yes. What I'm saying is, yes. Yes. It's a ghost story. Yeah. Yes. You could also assume that somebody picked them up and carried them. That's a, it's a, yeah, it's a ghost story. It's like, it's a fucking ghost story. It's yeah. like a very simple no, look, ghost story. Hey, and I want to say, I'm okay. With, and we've talked, I think we talked about this for sure at the end of the season, on the season two dude lander. Because of Monsieur Le Clown. What's his name? The dude, the clown, the guy, the French clown guy in the vest. <laughs> It's Raymond, you idiot. Monsieur Raymond. Yeah, that guy. I, um, I just the, want to pause for just a second and recognize one thing before Neil continues. So he's taking a dump. No, Kevin fucking remembered his name. Kevin always remembers. Look, I pay more attention to this bullshit than I give than I give on. But this is to me, I, I ch- it's fucking cuckoo birds, banana balls. That there's a fucking ghost that leads them back together as a, a, a fucking what is that theater term that the thing comes down from that. Duh. Deus ex market. Thank you. Sure. It is. Absolutely. And trap then, door. But th- for me, the difference is tonal, right? Like I can assume the show asked me to assume that this is an unsettling moment for this person. And it's easy because it's filmed unsettlingly. Then the show asked me to assume that fucking <laughs> Nick Frost in a bear costume, which is who it is in my head. I'm running around that. trying to bite people is scary. And it's not, it's fucking ridiculous. But this is this is what I want to say is at the end of see, uh, when we did Dude Lander for season two, which I guess was the first Dude Lander, and I had a lot of questions about how is magic going to be handled in this series in general, right? We've got the standing stones, the the dick rocks that she passes through, which is clearly magic as we perceive it, right? Despite whatever the Arthur C. Clarke or whatever thing about you know advanced technology will as appear as magic to anyone suitably primitive or whatever. Um, but so we, we've got the example of, we've got the example of magic of the standing stones, which is clear and we've seen it used several times. We've got, um, and now, and then we had Monsieur, uh, Monsieur, Monsieur Raymond. Raymond, who we had reason to believe was something other than what he appeared on the surface. Mm-hmm. Perhaps a time traveler, mm-hmm. perhaps something even more than that. But we never have gotten any sort of closure on that question. And now we have like a ghost, which could be in bounds for the magical realism of this show. Except that this show, except for the Standing Rocks, has not really gone outside of the bounds of the Standing Stones for magical realism, except for maybe this one case, right? Of of of, but that but then the man in the bear suit would have been an opportunity to actually probably stretch that even a little bit further and make it instead of being completely ridiculous, maybe you could have even elevated that moment to show in some way that he was somehow possessed of the spirit of a bear or something but you could have elevated that moment to be more of a magical realism moment in to help sort of string together these little moments of like the standing stones and monsieur Ray, yeah monsieur raymond and i'm not good at french and and potentially even the ghost but they didn't right yeah this and so is, now you've got yes. the ghost where it's like clear like it's not to me i'm i'm just it's very clear to me with the shoes showing up and with her being led to the to the head and the necklace and all that other stuff that it's not just a fever dream, that it was actually like an elevated experience that, yes. that she had. Um, there are some book changes there too, which I think muddy it a little bit, but she definitely finds the skull before she sees the ghost. And that's really important. I think, no, it's not, it's silly. It's a silly fictional thing, but in terms of the conversation we're having, she finds the skull and then she sees the ghost and that's cause and effect essentially. Mm-hmm. But, um, I think that you've actually articulated what I'm trying to say better than I have, which is that the that ghost... That can't be possible. It's, no, it's totally true. The ghost is a heightened thing. You're suspending your disbelief to assume that in this world ghosts exist. Um, but the guy in the bear sp- suit is supposed to be realism. It's not supposed to be fucking magical or spooky. It's supposed to just be a dude dressed up like a bear biting people. But it's not from the books, right? It's just no. from the show. In the books, it's an actual bear, but which is also have. heightened and silly. And But the tone of that scene is also, like, it's scary, but also kind of funny. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's a missed opportunity, right? That with the ghost, they get to continue the idea that magic is real. Yeah. 
And I think they actually missed an opportunity with the guy in the bear suit to, the, to decide, okay, we're not doing an actual bear. We're doing the bears mm -hmm. instead. And, but to make that a little <laughs> bit. Kevin's <laughs> face. <laughs> but I mean, and look, this sounds totally dumb. Look, if this was uh, the TV show Legends of Tomorrow, and you can imagine <sighs> Vixen uh, clicking on her necklace and all of a sudden having like the bear spirit around her. Yeah. Like you could have seen the, this, car this guy get killed and Jamie having a vision of a bear sure. like leaving the clearing or something, right? And that it would have suggested like this heightened reality that they clearly live in because people are touching stones and traveling through time. <laughs> Uh, I will say there's more magic on the show than you remember, which I feel a little bit bad pointing out because I think it might make you both grumpy about it. But there's a lot, Hit right? Me. Like there's the poison detecting necklace. Yes. Right? Again, Monsieur Raymond. Yep. There's Monsieur the, who's Raymond. Who's a time traveler. Miss sort of unconfirmed, but yeah. There's He also does legit fortune telling. There's a lot of fortune uh, are telling. Again, are we show. talking about mm -hmm. Monsieur Raymond? Yeah. But also, before Claire goes back in time, there's the old lady from the house. She does the palm whose, reading. Whose daughter then bought the house, right? Yep. Uh, there's that. But the, Fiona. There's Fiona. The, the, the bones with Monsieur Raymond. Yeah. And then doesn't... <laughs> there's, so what's so hard about Monsieur Raymond? The fact that we have 42 ounces of old English is what's That's so true. fucking hard they about it. Oh my God, they did finish. Yeah. They finished This it. is not 48 two ounces of old French. <laughs> Okay, that's very brilliant. well done. Very that's well brilliant. done. Oh my god! Uh, but then there's also <laughs> one more. Didn't uh, the well, woman Claire who taught pretends to be a fortune teller? But the the uh, the, white the Native American who taught yes. bunny and bear also. Adewine. There's like once a season. Yeah, there's some she sort of weird says fortune um, it won't be your fault. She has a dream about Claire being a white raven and all that fault. shit, and then says, "When the thing happens, it won't be your fault." Your and that's fault. about. It's not your fault. Oh my god, no! It's not your fault. This isn't about you, white it's not dudes. Your fault. Well, they're going full goodwill hunting, it's not your fault. and I don't well, appreciate it's not your fault. it. <laughs> it's not your fault. You're, we're not paying attention. Sorry. Sorry. So, so there's also, um, yeah, there's the white raven, and it won't be your fault. With uh, don't say it, don't fucking say it again. Robin Williams. When she's talking about um, her own death and seeing her own death and that Claire would blame herself for it. There's fucking um, uh, the drinking the potion at the end of season three and then Claire and Jamie both see Brianna. Mm, um, I do not remember that. Uh, Jamie, I, I don't actually at all either. Um, I totally believe it happened. But uh, Jamie remember. has a dream. It's in this season. Jamie has a dream about Brianna and knows where a birthmark is on her. Um, in this season? Yeah. yeah. He talks <laughs> about it with her in bed. What after. episode was that? Not with Brianna, with Claire. With, no, Claire. with Claire. With Claire after he gives her a bath, which, by the way, would have taken 20 hours to make that much hot water. I don't <laughs> bath scene was a great scene. Oh, yeah, that's where the bathtub was lined with the fucking cloths and shit. Mm -hmm. That was a good scene. Isn't there? There's the, uh, the weird brother and sister from season three where the sister lady uses Brianna's voice to talk to Jamie. Yeah, right? that's the weird potion thing. There's a potion involved with that? Yeah. I just thought she just started speaking. No. I don't they, remember they any drink of that thing. shit. Maybe, shitty maybe episode. Don't, maybe it's in the book. I don't know. Um, anyway, there's a lot. there are a lot of little things like that. Claire sees things. Um, Jamie sees things. There's a mention. Jenny has a monologue where she talks about seeing um, when Jamie and Liri were getting married. She saw Claire's shade, her ghost. Baby tree. Um, no. <laughs> She saw Claire's baby tree ghost uh, standing at the altar with them. Like, there's a lot of magic y shit. So, I don't have a problem suspending my disbelief for those things. It's just that they weren't asking me to suspend my disbelief. They were asking me to just be cool with something really dumb. Oh, and that's different. And that's what I mean is that I think they missed an opportunity there. Right. Yeah. That's really, to, that's a very interesting perspective on and I, the guy in the bear suit. I want to say that what you are calling something very dumb is the plot of the movie, The Village. So <laughs> you are calling M. Night Shyamalan dumb. We should have watched The Village. Shit. I, I don't know if I want to watch The I, Village. I don't agree. That the village is dumb? No, I mean, I think that uh, I think that three quarters of the village is brilliant, actually. But um, no, I think that the thing here is that there's a, like a reason why he's doing it. And it's not to terrorize people. It's because he has started believing that he's a bear. But also it's because he was shunned because he was a rapist. And there's, the I guess, the real, the hardest, 
I don't know, thing for me to get over with that very dumb storyline was the back padding about rape being bad mm. that just really rubbed me the wrong way. Anyway. Can I? So what, I don't know anything about the movie The Village except. We're spo- by the way, spoilers for The Village, which oh, came out that, in like fucking will, 2003. That William Hurt is in that movie. Yeah. And we're not going to tell the story on this episode, but Julie and I have gotten drunk with William Hurt. It's true. You guys have a good Bill Hurt story. We uh-huh. have gotten fucking shit canned with Bill Hurt. Oh my god, I can't wait to hear it. I I've snorted Sneef with Bill. I've Hoovered Sneef. With I've Bill Hoovered Hurt. Sneef. No shit. With Bill Hurt. No, I have not. No, I have not. That is not true. That is not true. Quick, do we need to go back to um, the online folks and find out if they have any new questions? No, for no this shit is dead. I closed. Oh, I the thought you were stream. doing a no. Slack. I told them to say in Slack. We do have one question. Okay. Uh, the question is this from. Kristen, a.k.a. Kiki the Wise. Hey, Kiki oh. the Wise. How's it going? Are the tuck shirts traditional Dudelander attire? <laughs> um, they are not. This is the first time I believe we've mm-hmm. done that. Although I don't think it's the first time you and I have worn tuck shirts uh, coordinated before. I think, I think we've done this is. once before. I rarely bust mine out nowadays. It's for But I knew it was blue. Only. Well, that's because it's blue is, is a fantastic flower to have in one's lapel. Well, that's not why I knew that. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. That's a terrible know, answer to my you, question. Fuck you, I've been drinking. <laughs> what answer do you want? No, the tuck shirts are not Yeah, this is the first time we've coordinated outfits. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, going last. forward... We're gonna, we have this themes now. Probably what's going to happen. Can't wait. Uh, Kevin wanted to wear full suits, but I was like, I'm in my own home. I wanted to wear full tuxedos. I wanted and to go I was out like, and I rent. I am not buying a tuxedo for this. Rent and get fitted for a tuxedo for this. Yeah. Year. Yeah, you wanted it to be prom. I mean, you know it's what? once a year. Can we do corsage. the last ever Dude Lander? Oh. Maybe. We dude have, Lander forever. We have a you know what? list No, I mean, the show ends. I mean, but the Dude Lander shall continue. <laughs> yeah, we'll just once a week. Just get like for like other shows? For, I don't know, for Life. something. We got a lot to talk about. You know, we should make them do a couple of Dune Faces with us. I that would know. be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Doom Face, 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 Doom Face. Gum Jabbar. I don't know what that means. Yeah, you haven't been listening to the podcast. Oh, yeah, he doesn't know what the fuck it means. I listen to the this podcast, guy, but I'm not doing this. Sad. Why do listen, dunes fall in vases? vases. Here's what I'm not going to I'm not gonna do this, and, and here's why. He's not here, but I 100% feel like that is a thing that you guys and Janine do. Who? Yeah. Oh, Janine would be here. And, and I'm saying I'm guest. But I don't want to step on that. I think that's like a special thing between the three of you. That's not for us. to. Neil and I wear tuxedo t-shirts. We're not going to step in on bits that you guys have. Built in with Janine. He's got a he's got a bits thing. I think that you you guys it's, that's a, an ownership between the three of you. That, that seems like a very delicate way of getting out to having to watch more Outland. It's true. <laughs> I mean, he's still got to watch all the Outlander. Kevin's got to watch all of it. Uh, I we was both thinking have to about. Watch it all. Uh, I was thinking about this. I would be curious, listeners, tell us on any of the places where you can tell us things. Um, we're still going to do Dune Vase, but every once in a while, a bitch gets Outlandered out. Am I wrong? <laughs> no. Uh, would you want us to do a different TV show in Ooh. the drought? So, wait, but here, it wouldn't Umbrella be... Umbrella Academy. No! <laughs> Never! Good Lord. God, Bitch, you should have seen what just happened. This basically just turned... It just went ouch. It just said ouch on the little Great. monitor. Because it should, because that show sucks. Um, <laughs> no, I was thinking like... <laughs> One season wonders, like we could do terriers, or we could do. I will only do pushing the wonder daisies. Years. The wonder years is too many seasons. That's all I'm doing. Great. See I would. Do, I would do pushing daisies. Yeah. Anyway, if you would listen, if we did another show during the drought, so that we didn't have to do all Dune Vase all the time, um, let us know. Anyway, quantum petty. leap. <laughs> Look no. out, five iron. We're coming we for you. Do we don't do quantum no, leap. No. That's that's Dennis Frymeyer's <laughs> area. That's Dennis Frymeyer's area. <laughs> And you know what? I need massages, so I'm not, I'm not doing that. Okay, um, no, I'm sorry. It's a, that's a wonderful segue, because this is a thing I have to talk about. Great. I was on Five Iron's Quantum Leap podcast. Also, I don't know if Dennis knows that we call him Five Iron occasionally instead of his real last name. He knows. Okay, good. So I was on Five Iron's Quantum Leap podcast, and he gave me an episode, and in it was a thing that I truly hate in TV, and it happened this season on Outlander, and it, nothing makes me more fucking pissed off than when someone travels through time 
in a piece of fiction and interacts with an actual real historical Ooh, person. George Washington. So when George Washington shows Washington, up, Washington, six foot ten, but they're killing for fun. We all did different verses. He's coming. He's, He's coming. coming. He's, He's coming. coming. When George Washington shows up and like, you know what? Like, this is Brie. Oh, my God. We met George Washington. We're sitting in a fucking carriage with George Washington. I have never been more upset at this show than in that moment. The way you feel about a man in a bear suit is the way I fucking feel about somebody showing up as George Washington and then being like, look who we're going to interact with. I mean, I want to raise one point. It's going to happen more and I'm just going to get more pissed. Uh, two points. There are no two points. Uh, so <laughs> it is reasonable <laughs> to assume... That because Jamie is a part of the government, that he will meet people associated with the government at the time of American history with which Americans are most familiar. I, I agree like 100% just, on it's, that. It's like, it's, it's, there, there weren't that many fucking people here. There well, weren't that many fucking people and, in government. And to be fair, also, Unclenched, he's Kevin. getting mad about this because he's an American citizen and George Washington's on our money. But you didn't give too much of a shit about this when we were doing fucking uh, the beach. I don't know European BPD. history. BPD, <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, the, uh, beach, the beach is not a beach beach is different. BPD, BPD, Which Bonnie one? Prince douche. Yeah, Bonnie Prince BPD. douchebag. Yeah. The beep. Yeah. You're right. I only care about American the history. The guy that the song I'm is about. Uh, to be in America. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you what. There's a very brief cameo from Benjamin Franklin in the books, which I assume will be cut. So, uh, God willing. God willing. He's, willing he's just naked saying, in a solarium. I'm just saying, seriously, Kevin, though, se- season two was all about this guy who's a historical Cake. figure that they're interacting with. Yeah. Right? Well, listen, the reason why it's going to get cut is no one wants to see Ben Franklin's donger on TV. We've covered this. Don't worry. The patriarchy, we won't. So, <laughs> But I don't. Well, what if we did? And what if it was It'd be something? Sh- it would be shaped like a beer stein. It's shaped like a turkey. Hilarious. No. Uh, uh, that's why you want to be Franklin, Ben Franklin, 100% enormous wing. Probably. Oh, he's hanging pipe. He seems yes. right, right? It's like going to be like three tennis balls in a sock. Mm-hmm. I just watched that's that not, episode. It's like a pork loin hanging there. Because <laughs> it's going to be like that for Ben Franklin because you never know who's going to get one. Mm-hmm. He, you know when he tied a key to a kite? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like where you're going with that. That was definitely his wang. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. That would kill him. Now ha- Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin. What happens to Frank Benjamin Lund, Franklin? Franklin Frank Lund. Uh, really long dong fucking kill. <laughs> <laughs> He's, He's coming. coming. He's, He's coming. coming. He's, He's coming. coming. <sighs> I just, it, nothing irritates me more than actual historical But figures. it didn't in season two. Because I didn't give a shit. It will, but, Kevin, it will not surprise you to know that when the American Revolution happens on the show that Jamie is going to be in the military. So, get, I mean, just get used to it. It wouldn't surprise me because that's what We're happens We're still not the watching last, The like, Patriot. I mean, it didn't fucking bother you in Hamilton. No, Hamilton is is different because I am seeing a musical about our founding fathers, right? Well, you are now watching a TV show about people living at this point it in history. It just irks me. And it, and here's the thing. It's only one time traveler when that happens. The rest of them just live then. I'm basically saying just get ready for more George Washington. He'll be back. So oh, He'll be back? He'll be back. <laughs> you will you'll be see. <laughs> I'm with you. You'll remember he belongs to something. I don't know. I got For nothing. one last time? Oh, God. Yeah. Anything else about this season, Kevin? I have so much. I want to know. Wait, you both alluded to really liking the bathtub scene. So tell me more. I don't know. That's just as hot. Just clearing a bathtub. Hey, giving giving your loved ones a bath is kind of a cool thing. Simple. That's always fun. Easy. A nice connection between the two of them. Yeah. Sponging somebody, lifting them up while they're sopping wet to your bed. That's going to get moldy. Well, she's okay. Wet. Okay. Look. I mean, I'm not saying that that's like a fantasy. I want to live. It's not a fantasy. Part, I'm just being realistic. Yeah. What he's saying is he couldn't lift me out of a bathtub. Um, I could fucking <laughs> lift the shit old. out of you out of a bathtub. Ooh, Do it right now. Challenge. Do it right now. No! <laughs> I will not. Fle- this is when we would do a smash cut to like 48 hours from now when I get a phone call from Neil because... <laughs> Julie's in the hospital. Yeah. Because... <laughs> no, he's... <laughs> he's and I hit my head on the edge of the tub. No, oh, that's I, it's gonna dark. be more. It's gonna be more comical. It's dark than for me. This is our darkest one between no. dead pets and Julie <laughs> having a brain contusion. This is the darkest. I one. was gonna say that Neil had his ass stuck in a wall. <laughs> God, he, I love that so much. That's way better. He lifted you up, so lost good. his balance, and went boom, and his ass got stuck inside a wall. 
<laughs> I think that's mine is better. It is much juicier than it was a few years ago. Mm-hmm, I'm just mm-hmm. saying. I can I'm learning so much shit. about your butt, Neil. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's out there. <laughs> you don't like fingers up there. How are you going to feel about drywall up there? Mm, probably not great. I mean, how do you feel about drywall up your butt? I don't think it's ever gone up my butt. Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm not hoisting anyone from the bathtub. Once again, well, single, people are unmatching because I fucking hate Roger. <laughs> I'm not, Kevin, I'm not sure that the reason you're not hoisting anyone from the bathtub is because you're not seriously dating anyone. No, there's just no one to hoist from the bathtub. Well, sure, but that but that implies that you could hoist somebody from the bathtub if you were seeing them. <laughs> Kevin, do you want to... Do, do I need to show you the caricature again? Do you want to hoist me from... Picture. Are you saying you want to hoist me from the bathtub? Neil? Nothing would gross me out more <laughs> than to hoist, to deadweight your dumb body. From I'll wear a swimming trunks. That's no. Not hard. Hold on, will you wear your singlet? I mean, I guess. God, that seems like it would suck in the bathtub, though. <laughs> All parts of this suck. All parts. <laughs> you guys, we're already over an hour for the second part. Yeah, I think this is going to have to be two episodes. We'll have to yeah. find a way to just. No, I'm just going to cut it off right in the dead dog part. Are, well, are you saying we shall we, cleave it in twain? Yeah. We shall. But then we're going to have to record something, me separately listing all the patrons. That's fine. Because we've got to do the stuff at the end. So you'll have to, like, on the thing. Mm-hmm. Guys, let's do one more hour. Or let's go could, three episodes. Let's do you it. You could do the patrons right now, and I could separate it out. Yeah, but All Star Saturday Night starts I'll in 30 explain. Minutes. I'll do, we'll just we'll do it separate. Okay. Um, but speaking of that, did y'all want to share any parting thoughts while I pull up our list of patrons? Whew. Parting thoughts. Gosh. Mm. Um, well, mm. I can only say that um, I can't wait that next season can't get here soon enough. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to spending another uh, winter in Kevin's home as often as possible. Um, and us growing even closer together than we've, than we've come to be. Kevin? I don't ever want you to set foot in my home again, but I do want access to your Amazon Prime account uh, so I can abuse your your subscription to stars. Um, oh, that's a little buddy down. It's okay. Um, I, I don't... I, I have a real uh, hard time. I love uh, coming on here. I actually... Until you... <laughs> there it is! God, what the fuck? I was about to say I like coming here until Julie just farted all up in that chair, but... Uh, can we split that? I would like to try it a little bit. Um, uh, you know, I enjoy hanging out with both Julie and Allison. I really dislike hanging out with you now, Neil. But <laughs> Love you uh, too, buddy. Love you too. I, I, you know, I, I can't say that I'm looking forward to another season of this. Because it seems like what they were leading the next season off to be was a manhunt between friends. Ugh. But I don't know. It'll probably last for like four episodes and then something will come up. Mm-hmm. Someone else will travel through time. And they'll be like, what, Frank? Mm-hmm. Through time. They'll have to help out with hey, the Louisiana Frank is purchase. Dead, you insensitive prick. Yeah, but time is a flat circle, so there is a mm. point of time where Frank is still alive. You know, alive. we didn't talk about that. Frank's what, great. Did, what did you think about the Frank episode? Liked it. Liked it. I'm always Team Frank. I've been Team Frank from the beginning. Um, it was sad. It's nice to see his perspective and knowledge over the fact that, like, yeah, this is going to end. It helps to give a little more context as to why he would start to have an affair. On Claire, because he knows that she's eventually going to go back to Jamie. And die. Look, we all die. <laughs> we all die. <laughs> we do all die. Oh, we, we didn't talk about that, about the whole, like, oh, my God, I've got to go back in time 100 years and save my mom from dying. Who will eventually die. You're still going to die before, like, you're ever bored, so I don't know what the hell. Like, <laughs> God, it, that is weird. It's fucking weird, right? Oh my God, they died. Oh my God, 150 years ago, my parents died. Holy shit, I'm going to go back in time and fix it. Uh, they they die. died young. They died in their 50s. I mean, that is that young? At well, that point in time? I mean, for Claire it is, yeah. And also, she hadn't been back that long. That's not weird to me. That doesn't mm. seem weird to me at all. I think maybe yeah. Brianna was just scared and wanted to see her mom. I, I, I think Brianna just wanted to see her mom. I think things weren't working out at MIT. <laughs> and, and with that, we're going to read a list of patrons. Wait, I'm sorry. I have one more question. Hit us. Hit us. So in the 1960s, Roger goes to that uh, celebration, and they're naming all, all, all the clans. No, I had a joke, and I lost it. I didn't word it right. I had a good button. Oh, you fucking... No, 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 no. Hold on. Wait. It's The a, gathering, and they're... Yeah, they yeah. name all the clans, and they bring Oh, yeah, and he goes McKenzie, and I was really hoping that someone named Spuds McKenzie would show up. Worth it. <laughs> No, it wasn't. (laughs) (laughs) 
We've reached <laughs> we've reached the portion of Dude Lander where Hi Sophie. She just doesn't give a shit. She does not give a shit. She's real cute though. She's mm-hmm. purring hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good kitty. I made her I made her a little nest. I put pulled the towel up around her. Good kitty. Um We've reached the part of Dude Lander where um, they're just talking shit. So yes, we're going to wrap up. That's true. Um, we <laughs> will love you, you guys. Not you two. You suck. The listeners. We love the listeners. Um, Neil. Neil has picked Jesus up his Christ. microphone. I'm the one that has to edit this. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no. Do you, I'm just. Do, are we doing the names? Oh, you're just getting ready to say hi, Mom? Is that what's happening? Or something. Okay. Um, so you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash podlandercast. You can find us on Twitter at podlandercast. You can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash podlanderdrunkcast, where you can sign up to join our Slack channel or get bonus episodes or uh, get your name read out loud, which is what I'm going to do in a second here. Uh, also, you can find the podcast anywhere that fine podcasts are sold for free um so stitcher itunes whatever please leave us reviews not only do they make us laugh every fucking time we got some really good ones do you remember anything particularly funny from the most recent ones they were funny i remember something about your reviews there was one about me (laughs) that i think about all the time that was so long ago bra let it go i can't make like elsa and shoot a thing of ice at a giant wave and then run up it and then um It'll be about global warming. Anyway. I do remember one that was like, I like it when a show keeps it real and doesn't give a shit when the show is bad and talks about it. So we did that. Yeah, we did that. That's anyway. how I feel about this episode. Um, so <laughs> uh, we want to thank everybody who listens and especially everybody who supports us on Patreon because the show would not be possible without your help because it is fucking expensive. Um and especially want to thank the following lovely people. Jen Lander Drunklin, Chantel Davis, Trish McCreary, Jenna Polkowski, Dr. J, Lori McGuire, Anne Gavin, Katie Kirshner, Amanda Newton, Beth Luck, Amy Gustafson, Rachel Townsend, Steph Peterson, Meredith M., Tara Lucchino, Meredith Ottery, Catherine Marshall Eastman, Chantel Salters, Mary Lumpkin, Tanner Cole, Kiki the, the Wise, Crystal Nanavati, Ann Gibson, Molly Layton, Heather Moore, Ruth McCormick, Kara Marlowe, Flourish Root, Friday Payton, Viv Pickles, and Kathleen Moniz. Hi, Hi Mom. Mom! Kevin, you didn't say it. I'm sorry, I didn't know that I was supposed to. He never makes it to the end of the episode. No, I've never listened this far into an episode. <laughs> say hi, Mom. Gee, I'm glad it's raining. Say hi, Mom. Love it? Say, please say hi, Mom. Hi. It's for Jen Moniz's Mom. Do it, dude. Oh, Jen Moniz. Jen Moniz is the fucking best. How come you guys you used to have guests on? Like, uh... We are guests. All right. <laughs> hi, Mom. Thank you. It's for Jen Moniz's mom. She's the best. But Jen's the best. Jen should be on the show. She will. Now say hi, mom, again. I, hi, mom, for the fifth now time. Now say hi, Jen. Say it like you mean it, dude. I don't know. Hi, Jen. No, me, but really. I, listen. Say hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> that was really fun. Uh, anyway, we will be back next week with something of some sort. <laughs> Who knows? Some Dune Vase shit, probably. Um, or I don't know, maybe we'll talk about the Oscars or maybe we'll, I don't know, um, just go to have a longer conversation about Otter Tooth. Uh, <laughs> and that's it. Did, did, did you have a sign off? No, I don't think we got anything ready for this. No, we, we really talked a did lot you, about did how did you to think open. About, did you think about how to close it all? Just sing the fucking Ernest song. Do I didn't it. Think of, no, I don't, do it I don't together. Know the, I don't the lyrics. We don't know the lyrics. We didn't actually spend the time Then sing the theme that. song. You've no, done that every other year. No, but Kevin doesn't really know it at all. You know, like, you started That's never well, stopped well, you before. Um, I bet uh, that this is the uh, 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 sing uh, the song. Y'all, it's taken me forever to edit this episode, so here's some outtake love for you. You do have a you you do have a pretty elaborate labial fold. Point, point to where on that picture I have a labial fold. Right there. This thing. Just look at this thing. A labial fold? Yeah, it's called labial the labial means fold. Lips, dude. That's your, this is your labial fold right here. <laughs> and because you smile so much in life, that's accurate. <laughs> push you into <laughs> oncoming traffic. God, there's all these delicious beer options available. And we're still <laughs> drinking. <laughs> For a while, I
I was keeping up with you, and then I realized for my own sake I should slow down, try to make it through. Yeah, this. I'm a goddamn glutton. I can't fucking help myself. 